So that's the gateway to transformation. And today I'm going to speak about how we react and change our behaviors and attitudes based on others, which is social influence. So social influence scale for technology design and transformation. That says an extension of my previous work on socially influencing systems, how we can combine social psychology into the user experience of the systems. And then five years ago, we developed a system into the airport that's in Finland, in Oulu, and there's in the background is a screen, and we engage travelers to respond to questions. So usually people would be standing with a questionnaire and ask the questions, we use the technology instead. So we designed a system that asks a question to the people and they could use Twitter to respond. And the tweets would show up under the questions. So the questions were rotating and the, their answers were showing there. So users with their pictures, with their answers, and we left some space for experimenting with the social influence principles. And we have seven of those, social learning, and we use this space so that people would learn from other tweets. And in this space, uh, we use other six principles, social comparison. So based on how many tweets you provided, your username grew in a size and also changed the color. We use social norms, so define norm. So usually you respond one tweet and then it was the aggregate actual behaviors of the norms. Facilitation, so how many people are actively now using the system and responding to the tweets and their usernames. Cooperation, so every tweet was a brick in a wall, but you can not only build the bricks, you can build towers and stuff like that. So you contribute, so you cooperate. Competition, very basic, very primitive, so ranking. And social recognition, so the users that provided more tweets were recognized as special titles and images. So those are the seven social influence principles. Not only they are themselves, they have sub-dimensions. So social influence, has many faces. And that's one of the premise of our paper. So usually people refer to social pressure, um, social norms, social proof, but that's not only that. We go deeper and there are seven, and all of these seven, most of them, they have like sub-dimensions under that. So for example, social comparison has two dimensions, upwards, downwards. You compare yourself with better people to get inspiration, and you compare yourself with people that are not performing that well, to do what? To boost your self-esteem. I'm better than the others. And then, for example, the facilitation, which is the giving you more motivation by two potential sources. When you do it together with others, at the same time and place, you're more motivated. For example, running a marathon, you're more motivated on the day of the marathon, not on the other days, because there will be other runners. And onlookers, so the people watching you, spectators. And the same also applies to the other principles, and you can find more into the paper. So those are essentially the seven principles, and they also have some insights how effective they are depending on the starting point. So if you want to change the attitude first, these are recommended if you want to start with what the people think, comparison and norms. If you want people to get into the change but through the behavior, then facilitation and cooperation, and these are combining both attitude and behavior at the same time, competition and recognition. Essentially what we did in this research, we developed an instrument to measure. There wasn't an instrument to measure social influence principles to the depth. Of course, the most popular, which is social learning over here, and social norms over there, were quite often studied but there wasn't a unified instrument with the six items, six questions to each of those constructs to measure. And, and we use it to measure the susceptibility of people to these norms. Essentially, what we also looked at, how those seven principles are interrelated and interconnected. We used PLS-SEM modeling, so we had these seven constructs. And what we did, we looked what are the strongest correlations between them. So we did, we did more like investigative study. The starting point of the model is here, facilitation. Facilitation means the moment you realize there are other users of the system. So once there are other users, the other principles may emerge. And this is in comparison. So if you are able to compare your behavior with the others, competition, recognition, and also the others, cooperation, learning, and social norms. 
But I try to make the arrows bigger for those effects that are stronger, more significant. So for example, we have the strongest arrows here. So facilitation leads to comparison, comparison leads to competition, competition to the recognition, quite a standard social, social influence chain. And also facilitation has a strong effect on the cooperation, and so it goes. Why it's so important? It's because once you as a technology designer, you develop an app or you develop a system and you think, oh, I will introduce competition amongst the users so that they would be more actively coming back to the app. So now as a technology designer or as a researcher, you have to be aware that once you design one feature that represents competition, it naturally will impose a social recognition for the best performer. You might not intend to do that, but this is how the social sciences work. So once you see the ranking, the top person in the ranking has social recognition. So this is how to interpret that. And you can read more about that and ask me questions later. So now let's move on, because essentially we want a better life. We want to improve well-being. We want to improve our cities, businesses, education, and so forth. So this is a transforming framework. It's science-driven. It starts with Albert Bandura and social cognitive theory. It continues with the other tools developed by myself and other co-authors. And here is the social influence principles plugged into this framework. And interestingly, first four is to understand what is the root cause, what's the attitude and barrier that people have, why don't they change? Then only five, six, seven is for designing it, and eight is the ethics that we discussed this morning as well. Again, transparency. And my take on this is, if we develop two apps, and one is more transparent and the other is less, my hypothesis is that people will go with it app that is more transparent. And this is how developers of the app actually would create a way for a natural selection. Users selecting more transparent apps and therefore not giving a chance for the businesses that are willing to abuse the users. So now I will show you a video of why transformation is important. So this old guy has a name tag, a road. And there's a younger guy with a name tag, a driver. together, I think they would drive around safely, one GPS and the other driving autonomously. So the question when we plug in the third person, which is a human being, and we have some challenges with the attitudes and choices, so that's to re-emphasize that we sometimes believe that we are too rational or too, too logical and so forth, it not, not might not be the case. We also have seen technology design for uh, provoking some people to do some extra activities. That's Moscow, so people do squats to get a free ticket to Metro. The Mexico also replicated that and also tried to give a free ticket for Metro for people to doing that. And then some of the countries like places Dubai give a one milligram of gold for one kilogram of weight lost. And this is the way how we think about changing people's behavior. That's the mainstream thinking. Let's give something to the people. But let's be very mindful. What exactly is that? From the marketing typical options, that's a carrot. It's a giving some incentive, which means it, it has an actu a, a actual effect on the behavior, but the question is, how long does it last? As long as you get this free ticket, right? And when you don't get it, you don't do squats anymore. So therefore, we have to be very aware of how our minds work. We have this red part, which is instinctive, reactive, system one by Daniel Kahneman, and uh, the blue part is intelligent, the logical, analytical, and so forth. And most of the times, when we think about 
which interventions and which designs work with the intelligent part is really based on the carrots and sticks. So give me more money or give me more discount and I will do that. And if that doesn't work anymore, there are sticks. So people can receive some pain and they want to avoid the pain. So therefore they might be choosing to change. And therefore this is the typology. So by carrots and sticks, you can get the transaction. Transaction is one time change. Okay, I'm gonna re re refuse this cigarette or I'm gonna I'm gonna do this round this morning. And there is a transaction, it's a period of time. You can do it for one month or for three months or for a year, but still there is an end point and you cannot guarantee what will happen after that. So the question is, so what's the remaining for the instincts? It's exactly that. We are reacting to other people on an instinctive level. So the influence of others, social influence, is what can make your designs, technology designs, sustainable. So those are the three types. And these two are usually failing, and this is, this is for the sustainable one. And if you think, carrots and sticks are created, so they are artificial. They're made. While this is what we inherited and what we have developed over thousands of years. So therefore, it's a humane way of transformation. Just to prove that, the famous lift or elevator experiment, Prudential Tower in Boston, Researchers go into the elevator and face the back of the elevator, which is not natural. And those are random, regular people happen to the elevator. And how do they react? So this is 1962. Studies already been proving how strong and effective the social influence is. Therefore, based on that, and this is MIT, that's my old haircut and beard, and we were working on the mobility options, and this was projecting how you perform comparing to others. You could use pedaling or electric assist, and you would have the interface flashing back red or green, depending whether you pedal yourself or use electric assist. Then we thought about choices as you do your groceries, whether you pick more green products, which presumably are more healthier, or red products, and again, I don't speak about the individual data to be exposed to everyone. That could be a collective representation of what other previous people in the shop have purchased and then you look at your shopping cart and, say, and see a difference and you might try to think and adjust your selection. In a business context, very famous behavioral problem, people arrive late to the meetings. So meeting productivity goes down. We introduced a system and from the 70% over the month to the 100% people being on time. What did we do? Very simple thing. Computer, somebody marks who is on time, who is late, and on the screen, which was right there in the meeting room, you could see a collected data about everyone's performance over the last meetings. And, it, and this red bar means total number of meetings per person, and if you have this empty space, that means you were late. And it turned out, if the previously people thought everybody is late, they learned that actually half of the people are on time, which we can already use as a social norm, an example of social norm. You can see social comparison, you can compare yourself with the others, and also facilitation. It's happening right now with these people in the room and their performance. And that's it. No, none of the carrots, none of the sticks. Just information transparent on the wall. And just to show how exactly transformation works, we will always have positive people and actually doing the thing, we will be having people against doing that certain behavior, and we have this January 1st. That's the target audience for this transforming design. Why January 1st? New, New Year's resolutions, exactly. So once we open the gate of, green, of yellow people to see the green, it's a social pull, social influence, then during that experience, they change their identity and they become more greener. And once they become green, they have become influencers. Just like in this next example, maybe you've seen this before. So the researchers, they're all of the researchers, except this, this lady is a, is a regular person. And there was a beep. And at the beep, everybody stood up. And then every researcher went away. And now it's empty room and the beep. <laughs> And now the new other regular people come in. <laughs> 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 
no carrots, no stakes, just social influence. So if, if this is so powerful, why don't we use it more often in our designs? And the last example we'll show today is there is a company in the United States that produces these Kiki kiosks. It allows people to measure blood pressure and weight. And the problem was people could do it anonymously. And everyone would succeed if they would convert into the account holders. So what we did, we, we, we did an experiment. And once the person enters age and gender, a message came out, out based on the previous users, how many of them actually improved their health by having the account and having the possibility to see their previous historic health records. And so for the total group, we had 20% increase in conversion rate from anonymous to account holders. And for the weight specific group, it was even higher, 32%. So that's about it for today for the social influence scale for technology design and transformation. That's the website where there are more information, insights, and the scientific references, and also professional talks, including two of my TEDx's, and the new TEDx should be coming out soon. Thank you.